Okay, hello YouTube, this is the DVD Show, episode 36, and today I'm going to be reviewing Resident Evil 2 for the Nintendo GameCube. It's a pretty good game, Resident Evil game. It's my second favourite, and it's my best friend Adam's first favourite. Adam reviewed Swap the Edge Joke earlier on this year. Xbox 360. So, let's review this one. Now, Resident Evil 2 is a pretty good Resident Evil game. So, let's start reviewing it. Now, let's begin with story first. In Resident Evil 2, you get to play two characters. Leon Steve Kennedy and Claire Redfield. Let's begin with Leon's story. Leon's story, he's a copper who was on his first day on the job. And on his first day on the job, he comes to Raccoon City, and the Raccoon City's police department is meant, is meant to give him this big welcome party with beer and booze and stuff. And when he gets to Raccoon City, he, he, he finds this little girl called Claire Redfield, who is Chris Redfield's brother. Now, after rescuing her from, from some zombies and some shit, he um, takes a look around the city. I mean, he finds that the entire city is infested with zombies, and every police officer, apart from him, has been completely killed. Whoa. Leon's got a lot of work to do for to clear this town. So basically, Leon's story is going around the town, killing zombies, solving puzzles, and trying to get out. Now, Claire's story is a bit different. In Resident Evil 1, there's a character called Chris Redfield, and Chris Redfield got out of the mansion alive. Now in Resident Evil 2, Claire Redfield is, is Chris's sister and Claire wants to know what happened at the mansion so she goes off looking for Chris to ask some questions but she doesn't find it until later in the um, game series in, uh, until the game called Code Veronica but we'll get on that later. And let's move on to graphics. The graphics from Resident Evil 2 on the GameCube are pretty good. But there's, but there's a small problem with this. First things first. When Capcom decided to remake this game on the GameCube, basically what they did was they took the original PS1 version and slightly smoothed out the graphics so it looked a little bit better. I mean, the graphics in this game are pretty good, but I don't know. The Nintendo GameCube is... Five times more powerful than the PS1. And I don't feel Capcom made full use of the um, GameCube's graphical capabilities. I mean, the GameCube has a very good graphic chip, and the PS1 doesn't have that good one either. Oh. So, why they kept the same graphics for the PS1 version is a big mystery to me. I mean, as you can see, they look pretty good. The zombies walk like retards and they've got bricks for arms. Um, most of the cutscenes look pretty good. Well, I say most of them, but... Basically, in every cut... There's some cutscenes in the game that look a little bit weird. These are the cutscenes that appear throughout the game. Well, they're, the, they're the ones that tell the story, basically. The cutscene at the beginning of the game, which which tells the entire, which t sets the plot for the entire game. It looks perfect. Everything works. But the cutscenes throughout the game, there's one big problem with them. Now, can you notice what's from this cutscene? Did you get it yet? Just take another look. Look at the man's face. What is it that happened that should be happening? Still the guy? Well, I'll, t I'll put you out your misery. The big problem with these with the um these cutscenes in this game is that the mouth doesn't move. So every time the guy says a word, he talks normally, but his mouth doesn't move. I mean imagine if I talk like this to you. And if I talk without moving my mouth, I'd start this. I don't know. This is Resident Evil 2. I thought I thought I thought weird, don't I? And the big problem with Resident Evil 2 on the GameCube, the lips don't move in the cutscenes. So you've got Two people talking without a lip swing. It looks kind of weird. 
Anyway, just about that. Next to the controls for this game, well, the controls for the Evil 2, they're very simple. There's, there's no add-ons for the PS1 version. They've got the same controls as the, um, as the, as the PS1, apart from on the GameCube. Use the phone stick to move around. Use the, um, why button the infantry screen where your guns, keys, and weapons are. Uh, the B button, if, the, if you hold on the B button and move the phone stick, you can run. If you hold on the R button, you can, if you hold R and then press A, you can fire your weapon. The L button doesn't seem to do that much. The Z button doesn't, the Z button brings up the map, which is quite useful. The X button doesn't do anything. And the L pad and C stick don't do anything either. So they're the best controls this game. And the controls work pretty well. Now the next... Let's look at the um, gameplay of this game. Well the gameplay of this game is pretty good. Basically you're just going around, collecting keys, solving puzzles, killing zombies, and um, beating off giant monsters and bosses and stuff. So the gameplay is pretty good. Now let's move on to um, music. The music in this game is pretty good and quite a lot of time it takes you by surprise. Example, just then a zombie came through the window and ate the nap and killed the um, store clerk. So that's my job to pop him in the head. I need a bigger gun. Shit! Too many zombies! So the music in the game fits. So the music is really good. It fits the game perfectly. It, it adds to the feel of the horror. It makes the game really, really good. That's basically what I about the music. Now they saw YouTube, but I've run out of time. So join me in part two of my Resident Evil 2 review. Well, I'll finish reviewing this game. I'll tell you the good stuff about this game and the bad stuff, and I'll also give you a rating. But until then, YouTube, bye bye.